least you fit. Step about on the water. Every step is stronger. Well, this is the first Sunday of Advent. And as today is the first of four Sundays in the Advent season, which provides us with this special time to anticipate and prepare for the birth of the Christ child. The fact of the matter is many of us gotten used to celebrating Christmas that we've forgotten that we need to get prepared and spiritually prepared to welcome in the indwelling Christ in our daily lives. We can use these four weeks to step out in faith and discover God in new and different ways. We have daily opportunities to remember this profound gift of the holidays and its meaning in our lives. Now, in this Advent season, let's make the decision to expect that God is going to urge us forward and to develop a deeper understanding in exciting and new ways. Just as God broke into the manger on Christmas morning, we must believe that God is going to break into our lives in unexpected and life-changing ways. This is what we're about. Greetings, greetings. Don't worry about bowing. I'm much too excited for those kind of things. Good morning, greetings. Who are you? Who am I? I'm a Mingus. Can't you see from my royal clothing? I am so excited. I have wonderful news to share. I've made an important discovery. There's a very unique celestial presentation that is happening right now. What do you mean, celestial presentation? This is a church, not a PhD seminar in astrophysics. Ah, I see your point. Yes, I see the point there. Well, how shall I put it? You see, what I observed is, well, what I mean is... A new star? Yes. Well, it's definitely new. And since I have studied the heavens nightly since childhood, I'm quite familiar with the usual celestial landscape. That is the sky, and it's certainly unprecedented. It has never happened before. I mean, really, but whether it's a star or not, well, to be frank, we're not certain. We have considered the diagnosis of a nova or a supernova, but, well, it's possible that we're looking at a comet, and of, there's the absence of a plume, so... We're just not sure. Some of my colleagues have suggested a planetary convergence, and their interested, interest has been piqued by the fact that this phenomenon is occurring in this constellation, the constellation of Pisces. Intriguing, don't you think? Oh, I've done it again, haven't I? Sorry, it's just that, well... For the sake of our conversation, let's call it a star. Okay. This star is so exciting to me, I'm going to have to study it a great deal over and over. As a matter of fact, I'm considering calling a conference of astronomers from all over our region to discuss their findings. And of course, with the schedule, it may take a little while to pull this together, but perhaps next year, we can meet. Wait a minute! What are you talking about? You're going to hold a conference? You're going to hold a meeting? Aren't you going to follow that star? Don't you want to see what's happening over there in the east? Follow the star? Don't be absurd. As I mentioned, we're not even certain it is a star. You see, a planetary convergence is something entirely different. And it's a fascinating phenomena in its own right. 
How can I explain it to you? Hmm. I need some paper, and I'll just jot down a few simple equations. Wait. Haven't you considered that you might be part, have a part to play in a greater God plan? You, you just can't spend all of your time studying the star. But studying is what I do. To follow the star without proper planning, without foresight, would be just plain spontaneous. <laughs> no, the right course of action is more in-depth analysis. Wait now. Just hold that thought for a minute. Okay, everybody. What are we going to do? What can we say to this Magus to get her on the way? She's got a role to play that's very important. Otherwise, Christmas Day isn't going to happen. So what could we do to get her going? Does she have a camel? A camel! <laughs> we'll get her a camel. What else? We could ask Siri. We could ask Siri. Good idea. What else? Gold. Got to take some money along. Yeah. You never know what you're going to need to give it to. Yeah. Anything else? Go with her. Yeah. Need some fellow companions. Yeah. Yes, Heather. How about prayer and meditation? Prayer and thank you. So valuable. So, hey, Miss Magus. Yeah. We know you have a lot more study, but could we make a suggestion? Sure. With prayer and meditation, we think you should follow that store, star, whatever it is, and maybe make some, take some friends with you. You could talk together while you're traveling. You could, you could actually find out more along the way. Wow, what a novel idea. Sort of a traveling symposium. Yeah. Uh, that means a meeting that moves, just so you can understand it. Uh, <laughs> well, yes, I think it could be useful. There is only so much to be learned in a library, after all. And there is something about that star that is so important that it makes me want to step out of my usual routine just a bit. Maybe there are some other people on the road, too. Oh, this could be really interesting. I will give it a go, I tell you, and I'll let you know what happens. Thanks for the encouragement. Absolutely, wise ma'am. <laughs> I'll bet our singing would be even more encouragement for our Magus friend. So please join my, by standing, if you're able, and let's sing the congregational song, O Come, O Ye Faithful. <laughs> My talk today is on stepping out in faith. 
Now, one thing that's true about faith, it's always with us. In fact, we've got all the faith we're ever going to have. It's not possible to be given more faith. What's possible is using and directing our faith with deeper wisdom. Let's see more about how this unfolds. I turn to the writer Stella Terrell Mann. She says, faith begats faith, and love begats love. We must start right where we are with what we have and put it to work. So that means from the present moment, exactly where we are, what we apply to it, we get more of. So if I'm feeling like there's lack, there's just not enough, what am I begetting? More lack. Where's my faith? In lack. Faith always generates more of what we put in front of it. So if we have faith in love, we get more love. If we have faith in joy, we get more joy. If we have faith in doubt, we get more doubt. Powerful. And that's the work we get to do. Unity co-founder Charles Fillmore says this, Faith is the perceiving power of the mind linked with a power to shape substance. So faith is the very power where we co-create with God or our divine nature. Faith is where we can perceive an idea, and from that perception, bring it into fruition. That's pretty powerful. And then I turn to one of the women of unity. You're going to hear a lot about the women of unity, because I adore them. Elizabeth Sand Turner, who sat down and did an complete metaphysical Bible interpretation of the entire Bible. She says this about faith. Faith is the inner assurance that what we desire already exists in the invisible realm of spirit and can, by the exercise of our faith, be brought into being. Wow. Have you ever thought about it? There is nothing created that isn't thought about first. Hence, music stand didn't exist before someone thought, hmm, something to hold sheet music. And then from that thought, applied the faith to put the wood or metal or whatever together to create a music stand or a chair or my Prius. First thought, and then it's the perceiving power of the mind, our faith, that allows it to become in, into shape and form. Get it? Another woman of unity, Martha Smock, who headed Silent Unity for many years, says to have faith is to welcome the new, to Dare to get out of set ways, out of the ruts of living and thinking. Faith is the pioneering quality of the mind. Just the pioneering spirit of the founders of this church who applied that faith to realize something much bigger that didn't exist before that faith. But with their faith, it brought forth what we sit in today.
I had a revelation, divine guidance, seven years ago, eight years ago, sitting in my house in Maui, eating my granola. It was January 4th, about 500 feet above sea level, beautiful view, and I'm just chewing on my granola when out from deep within me came the directive, become an ordained unity minister. And from that moment, I began to pray, and I began to meditate, and I began to follow everything that flowed so easily for that to happen. From that one thought to right now, where I'm an ordained unity minister serving this beautiful community. And believe me, it required me to step into the new. It required me to move. It required me to put my knowing, my faith, in this idea into practice. And it took six years to do it. This is our pioneering quality of faith. Now, Charles Fillmore also says, faith is the highest expression of belief or confidence. So when we're confident about something, it's an expression of our faith. It's just, what do we have confidence in? Do we place that confidence in, in fear? In lack, in doubt, it applies our faith to do that. Or do we apply our faith and confidence in becoming an ordained unity minister or to planting a wonderful garden to reap harvest when the winter cold is over? Sometimes we plant the apple tree and we've got to wait a while because it's not going to bear apples until it's ready. But what is the element within the seed that knows that it's an apple tree? I'd say it's the faith. It's the very essence of that confidence of being that moves that apple seed into apple tree. That very same seed of God is in us that's guiding us and leading us to what is ours to do. Charles Roth was a unity minister and writer, and he makes this important point. Faith thinking is sowing faith. And the harvest next week or next month or next summer will be like unto faith seeds you are sowing today. We don't always know when that faith is going to be shaped into form. We don't know how long it took from the idea of the music stand to create a music stand. But it will come. And it may not look exactly like how we think, but it will come. And these faith seeds that we plant today will be our experience tomorrow, our, our what we're going to have tomorrow. So where are we placing that faith? Are we placing our faith in I'm not enough, I'll never be enough? Or are we placing our faith in I've got all I need to do, what I need to do today. I've got my health, relative, I've got my health, because sometimes I'm not fully strong and healthy. But then I can place my faith in my healing, in my recovery, in my wholeness. That's our affirmative prayer. And it's where we place our faith. Now, from Scripture, Hebrews 11.1, 1, we read, 
Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. So this whole idea is not new thought. It wasn't something that Charles and Myrtle Fillmore cooked up in their kitchen. This is old wisdom. And anyone that's paid enough attention to see how the world unfolds in its lavish abundance sees that faith is our assurance that there will be tomorrow. There will be more later today. And in God's lavish abundance, everything is possible. That's good news. Back to Martha Spock. We are safe when we are surely centered in God. We are free from fear when we are filled with faith. We're always safe when we're centered in God. And we're always centered in God. We cannot not be centered in God. Go ahead and try. There's no place where God is not. And just as I said last week, you can't hold fear in your heart if you've got gratitude. And the same thing's true with faith. If you place your highest directive, your confidence, your knowing, in your heart, fear can't reside in the same place. Just like lighting a candle in a very dark room, it's no longer dark. It may be dim, but it's not dark. So we can place faith in our heart and then reveal our next step. And who knows? You'll become healthy, strong, an ordained unity minister, or you might even be a musician sharing your love. It's all part of the journey. So let's take this time now to settle in and center in with God safe with God. Om Shanti 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 Om Shanti 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 Om Shanti 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 Om Shanti Shanti Shanti
Om Shanti is claiming peace. And as we turn to being centered in God, We open our heart to peace. And we call upon the wisdom of this day, faith. Where am I placing my faith? And what is my deepest confidence in what will be? Turning within, we listen to God's direction and clarity as we drop into this time in the silence. We are so grateful to feel that safety and peace when we reside in the silence. In the energy of God, our deep essence that is alignment with our faith. And so as we prepare to step out in this day in faith, we come back into this room. Might roll our shoulders and wiggle our fingers, our toes. And when we're ready, We open our eyes, bringing that connection with divine grace into all that we do. And then I have an affirmation for us. I live daily in faith, and I act daily from faith. Together? I live daily in faith, and I act daily from faith. And so it is.